The April 2024 issue of Edge magazine features an article discussing Warren Spector's one city block concept and its influence on game design. The concept, initially named the cheese shop, uh, aimed to simulate every detail of a city block, including buildings, shops, apartments, objects, people and their interactions to achieve realism. The idea evolved into a more specific hotel setting in Deus Ex, where players could engage in various actions within specific rooms. The hotel environment justified environmental replication and offered diverse storytelling opportunities. Spectre emphasizes that Deus Ex's near-future setting aimed to align with modern life to avoid complaints about inconsistencies. Uh, the article also introduces Shadows of Doubt, an indie game inspired by Deus Ex, which incorporates crime templates requiring real-time criminal activity. Although Shadows of Doubt doesn't fully meet the one-block RPG criteria, its deep simulation and emphasis on non-dialogue investigation techniques contribute to its immersive sim design. The article goes on to discuss the challenges of simulating real-world details in game development. Uh, Warren Spector cites Deus Ex as an example, highlighting the difficulties in accurately representing elements like phone and computer functionality. Um, by setting Deus Ex in 2052, Spectre sought to avoid criticisms about inaccuracies in simulating real-world environments and systems. The shift from a broad city block simulation to a hotel setting in Deus Ex enabled the development team to focus on creating a detailed and immersive environment. Um, this change reduced the scope of the project while still offering players various roles and experiences, such as playing as a house detective and engaging with new guests and scenarios. Um, the hotel concept was also envisioned as an episodic game an early version of the modern service game model, where updates and new content would be released over time. Uh, Shadows of Doubt, a first-person detective simulator, builds upon the concepts pioneered by Deus Ex. Its procedurally generated city features simulated citizens with individual lives, homes, workplaces, and relationships. The game also employs crime templates, but with the added realism of requiring perpetrators to commit crimes in real time generating clues and evidence. Originally designed as a top-down detective management game, Shadows of Doubt transitioned to a first-person perspective influenced by Deus Ex. The game's deep simulation extends to its NPCs, who possess hidden status trackers and diverse personality types. Additionally, the game features complex infrastructural systems like a functional phone network contributing to the game's immersive sim design. While Shadows of Doubt doesn't fully meet the one-block RPG criteria, its emphasis on real-time crime, deep simulation, and non-dialogue investigation techniques showcases the continued exploration and innovation within the immersive sim genre, drawing inspiration from Warren Spector's One City Block concept and... Deus Ex. Deus Ex, particularly the original game, continues to be recognized in numerous publications and magazines as one of the best cyberpunk games of all time. Its popularity stems from its emphasis on player choice, allowing gamers to shape the narrative and employ various strategies to overcome challenges. The game often ranks within the top 100 games in gaming history, typically around the 60th position. Surprisingly, the Adam Jensen saga within the series often receives less attention, and there appears to be a concerted effort to, to make people forget about it. Recently, it was revealed that a new Deus Ex game, which was reportedly in the early stages of development, was cancelled. This coincided with a wave of layoffs in the gaming industry. The planned game was not intended to be part of the Adam Jensen saga, as confirmed by Elias Tefexis, the voice actor for Adam Jensen. Tefexis mentioned that he was not contacted for the project, and if it were related to his character, he would have been involved by now. Interestingly, Eidos reportedly asked Tefexis not to mention Jensen during interviews, with the alleged intention of encouraging fans to focus on other games in the series. This decision seems counterintuitive, as it indirectly acknowledges the popularity of the Adam Jensen-led games. 
Uh, some speculate that the reason behind this move might be economic, as Deus Ex fans might not be as profitable as initially thought. However, others suggest that there might be other factors at play, such as narrative concerns. The events of the latest game in the series were set in 2029, and with the current year being 2024, the development timeline for a new game may be a source of concern. Although the connection between the in-game timeline and real-world events is tenuous, it's possible that the developers are considering how to manage potential confusion or discrepancies. It is just a game. It is not like it is narrating real events or people, or is it? In the video game Deus Ex Human Revolution, the fictional brand name of the surveillance cameras is Big Bro. This moniker is a clear allusion to the Big Brother character from George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984. The reference serves as a nod to the novel's themes of government surveillance and control, which resonate with the game's exploration of technology's impact on society and individual freedoms. By incorporating this literary reference, the game designers cleverly draw a connection between the game's world and the real-world concerns about privacy and surveillance in an increasingly technologically advanced society. All right, let's dive into the world of character lookalikes. As you know, many game characters are inspired by real models, actors, or even everyday people, but sometimes the face models are kept under wraps or there's no specific model used. However, we can often find resemblances or similarities between game characters and real people, uh, even if it's just coincidence. So I'm going to share some characters and their possible real life counterparts based on my personal perspective of course first off we've got um william r taggart aka bill taggart the leader of the humanity front i can't help but notice the striking resemblance between bill taggart and bill gates not just in their names but also their physical features with the glasses hair and even their roles as public figures often seen giving speeches Isaiah Sandoval, a prominent member of the Humanity Front and friend to William Taggart in Deus Ex, bears a resemblance to Canton Flas, the beloved Mexican comedian. In Deus Ex, Human Revolution, Eliza Kassan, the AI newsreader for Picus TV, shares a striking similarity in both facial features and hairstyle with Madonna in the music video for her hit song, Frozen. The sleek, high bun and elegant, futuristic aesthetic make Kassan a captivating presence on screen, much like Madonna in her iconic video. Next on the list is Athene Margulis, the executive assistant at Sarif Industries in Deus Ex Human Revolution. Her physical appearance reminds me a lot of Glenda Mae Jackson, an English actress and politician. Both women share a certain refined elegance in their features, and the resemblance is hard to miss. Plus, Glenda Mae Jackson was a Member of Parliament for an impressive 23 years serving with the Labour Party, so there's a political uh, connection there too. David Sarif bears a striking resemblance to two prominent historical figures. Firstly, his name and appearance evoke similarities to the acclaimed Egyptian actor Omar Sharif, whose birth name was Michel Youssef Dimitri Chalhoub. After being handpicked by an Egyptian director to star in the film The Blazing Sun, Chalhoub adopted the stage name Sharif, which means noble or nobleman in Arabic. Another striking lookalike can be found in Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, commonly known as Mohammad Reza Shah, or simply the Shah, who is the last monarch of Iran. The similarity is particularly noticeable in their hair pattern, adding to the overall resemblance. Pahlavi ascended to the throne in 1941, succeeding his father, Reza Shah, and remained in power until the 1979 Iranian Revolution, which abolished the country's monarchy and established the Islamic Republic of Iran. Following this upheaval, Pahlavi fled to the United States. Although the white streak pattern in David's hair is reversed compared to Pahlavi's, their shared facial features are quite similar. Notably, the distinctive grey streak in their hair are, captures attention and invites comparison with this significant historical figure. In Deus Ex Human Revolution, players face a moral dilemma when confronted with Wayne Haas, 
a gatekeeper police officer who also happens to be Adam Jensen's ex-SWAT teammate. Haas carries the emotional burden of executing an order to kill a 15-year-old augmented child, a decision Jensen vehemently uh, opposed. Uh, if players fail to persuade Haas to grant access to the morgue, they're left with the choice to forcefully enter, which involves eliminating police officers along the way. This choice leads to an in-game news article reporting a massacre at the Detroit police station, where a composite sketch of the suspect, supposedly resembling Jensen, is featured. Interestingly, the sketch does not depict Jensen's augmentations, such as his glasses, making him appear more like his pre-augmented self. Furthermore, the same news bulletin mentions cable television system malfunctions in downtown Detroit due to the shutdown of an antenna in gang-controlled territory. This event is part of a mission task requiring players to deactivate the antenna in Derelict Row. The news attributes the maintenance of the antenna to both local police and Picus News, a corporation responsible for disseminating manipulated news to mislead the public and shape perceptions in favour of the Illuminati.